Okay, so that's the good news about the desires. It's a trick from the devil. He wants you to think you can't live without them. Don't fall for it. God will show you that you can live without them. And you'll live better too because you won't have that sin standing between you and God anymore. You'll get to experience God the way he originally intended, at least as well as you can while you're still in this sinful world and still have a sinful nature. But once you get to heaven, you won't have any of that to worry about anymore. And it's still a lot better in this life to not be willfully sinning against God. You're going to be amazed at how different everything is, how differently the world looks when sin isn't your priority. Okay, now for those of you who want proof, well, what's the best kind of proof you can get? People say that seeing is believing, but then again, they also say you can't believe your eyes, and that the hand is quicker than the eye. It probably has to be something more than seeing. Here we go. Think of a place that you really enjoy. Maybe it's your favorite place on earth. What do you like about it? Why do you like it? What would it be like if you could spend every waking hour there? Okay, now what if I told you that this place was terrible, that you're wasting your time going there? You're not going to enjoy yourself, so don't even bother going. Would you believe me? Of course not. Why? Well, think about it. Because you know differently, right? Why is that? Because you've experienced it. It doesn't matter what anyone else says. You know what it's like. You know you love that place. The best kind of proof you can have that God exists is to experience God. This is going to sound a little strange, but if you believe in God, it shouldn't be because of anything I've said. You see, if your faith is based on words or convincing arguments, then you're only one argument away from losing your faith. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, 4-5, And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. The Spirit being talked about here is the Holy Spirit. This is God's Spirit. The Bible says that when we believe in Jesus, God gives us His Spirit to live inside us. We will experience God in this way. It's pretty much indescribable and at the same time undeniable. I can't really explain to you what it's like. You have to experience it for yourself. Because it isn't based on human wisdom, and it isn't like anything else we can experience in this sinful world, it's God's presence inside of us. You'll know it and no one will be able to talk you out of it. And the best part is, you don't have to work to get it. God will give it to you. It's a gift. So, Jesus. What's all this about Jesus? Well, Jesus is God in human form. He is the manifestation of God. He is God's Son. The Bible says that Jesus was there in the beginning with God when the universe was created. So, why do we need Jesus? Well, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Wages are something that you earn. We've earned death because we sinned. Remember, God can't stand sin. The punishment for our sins isn't just death in this life, it's also spiritual death. An eternity of punishment for willingly rebelling against God by sinning against Him. So if we die for our sins, then justice is served. The price has been paid for the crime. The bad part for us is that we're stuck in hell forever serving our sentence. Why is that? Well, Adam. He sinned and through him, sin entered into the world. Now all of us are born sinful. Don't believe me? Ask yourself this. Do you ever have to teach a little kid to behave badly? No, of course not. He does that all on his own. You have to teach a little kid to behave properly. See, that's our sinful nature. So Jesus had to be born of a woman to be human. But if he was just human, then he'd be born sinful also. Jesus was born of a virgin, Mary, through the Spirit of God. God is the Father of Jesus. Jesus had no sin. He lived a perfect life, even though he was tempted like you and me. So when Jesus died on the cross, he wasn't paying for his own sins, he was paying for our sins. The same way that sin came into the world through one man, Adam, salvation, the payment for sin, came to the world through Jesus. All we have to do is believe in this payment that Jesus made for us. We need to confess our sins and ask God to help us repent. That means turn away from our sins. You see, we have to really be sorry for our sins. It's like if someone comes up to you and punches you in the face over and over again, but apologizes to you in between each punch. At some point, you might start questioning the sincerity of his apology. If he was really sorry, he'd try to do something to stop punching you in the face. It's the same with us and God. 
If we're really sorry for our sins, we're going to ask Him to help us stop. We're not going to put ourselves in tempting situations or hang around with people who tempt us to do things we're not supposed to do. This is kind of a big point. It's the order in which all this happens. For those of you who think that all religions are pretty much the same, pay close attention. What's the big difference between Christianity and all other religions? Think about it for a second. Okay, here it is. Whether it's going to heaven or paradise or nirvana or achieving a higher state of consciousness, with worldly religions, it all comes down to how we live this life. If we live a good life, then good things happen after we die. If we live a bad life, then bad things happen after we die. This is what makes Christianity different. In fact, it's what makes it exactly the opposite of worldly religions and philosophies. The Bible says that there is absolutely nothing we can do to earn our way to heaven. Not a thing. Want proof? Okay, here it is. Ephesians 2, 8-9 For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, that no one should boast. See, we like the idea that we can earn our way to heaven. That's why when you ask people who don't believe in God, well, what if there's even a chance that the Bible's true? Their answer usually is that they've led a good life, that they haven't killed anyone. Isn't that funny that that's the bar we set for ourselves? If we haven't killed anyone, we should get into heaven. Shows how tolerant we are of sin, particularly our own. But see, there's nothing we can do to earn our way because we're sinful. We usually just compare ourselves to the worst people we can think of and figure if we're better than them, then God will let us into heaven. If that were the case, then only one guy would go to hell, the worst person in history. No, the problem is we can't earn our way. Why? So that no one can boast that they were good enough, that they could make it on their own. See, it comes back to that pride again. God has to be shaking his head. We spend our whole lives sinning so often that we can't even keep track, and yet we still think we're going to tell God that we're good enough to get into his house. That's pretty presumptuous. Face it, we've got a problem. We sin all the time. Don't believe me? Try this one. Have you ever told a lie before? In Revelation 21, 8, the Bible says that liars will have their part in the lake of fire, along with sorcerers, whoremongers, and murderers. It's interesting to see how serious God takes lying. Right up there with murderers. We think lying is nothing. Certainly nothing God should punish us for. How about lust? Jesus said if we look at a person with lust, then we've committed adultery in our hearts. Have you ever lusted after anyone? How about using God's name in vain, frivolously, or even as a curse word? In Exodus 27, the Bible says that God will not hold a person blameless for taking his name in vain. How about stealing? Ever steal anything? How about candy or an mp3? Jesus said if we hate people, then we've committed murder in our hearts. If we call people fools, then we're in danger of the judgment. Ever hated anyone? Called them a fool? So, if you've done these things, then you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterous murderer at heart, and you have to face God on Judgment Day. If he judges you by the Ten Commandments, would you be innocent or guilty? Would you go to heaven or hell? Remember, God is a righteous judge. A good judge in this life punishes wrongdoing. God would be no less just than a human judge. This is why we can't make it to heaven on our own. This is why we can't save ourselves, even though that's what our pride wants. So, what do we do? We believe in Jesus. We believe that God loved us so much that he sent his only son to die in our place so that justice would be served, so that we wouldn't have to go to hell after we die. God promised to reveal himself to us so we can believe. He promised to send his Holy Spirit to us so we could experience him. He promised to change us so that we would no longer desire to sin against him. God did all the heavy lifting for us already.